Streamers, you know them, you love them, but what if I were to tell you that some of them may be bad eggs? That some of them may be up to nefarious deeds, doing unimaginable things? I know it may be shocking, but people who stream on the internet are not always the best people. And today, we'll be investigating one of those bad people. Welcome to the Ready or Not Lore series, where in today's episode we will be discussing the map 23 megabytes a second. This video will be divided up into two sections, the first being all in-game slash developer confirmed information, and the second being my own theories as to where the story and world may go in the future. has killed his mother and has taken his younger brother hostage. Our prime suspect, Michael Williams, aka Milky Toes, is an open house streamer known for his frequent outbursts. On site, there are at least two known civilians, the recently murdered Cassandra Williams, the mother of Michael Williams, who, after killing her, called 911. Michael also has his brother, Demarcus Williams, as his hostage. We also know in the complex, several unknown civilians are hiding inside of their apartments. Now that we know the suspects, let's listen to the briefing. All right, everyone, need your attention. Operators just received a 911 call from an individual within an apartment complex in St. Uriel this morning, detailing a brewing hostage situation. It seems that Michael Williams has barricaded himself in his apartment along with his brother, Demarcus. He also shot and killed his mother, Cassandra Williams. The call was brief, but gave us information regarding his potential mental state. Has anyone tried to regain contact with Michael? The call bounced when attempted and calls from negotiators outside have fallen on deaf ears. It sounds like Michael may be firing a weapon inside his room, and we've received multiple reports of gunfire from other individuals within the complex. The building has a single entry through the main atrium. There's also a second entry point through a fire escape nearby, which should allow quick access to the other levels without exposure to your teams within the atrium. The watch commander is on scene and has patrol holding perimeter positions. Thames is staging at the command post. Currently, they're awaiting our arrival to make entry, as the situation has been deemed dangerous, given no communication can be established. Do we know of any other threats within this space? Michael's apartment is number 14, and so far we've managed to confirm that rooms 16, 11, and 12 are all currently inhabited but closed off. Those residents have either been evacuated or are sheltering in place. However, we were unable to make contact with apartments 13 and 15, both of which are under the ownership of Michael Williams at this time. It is unknown if he is still barricaded with his family in 14 or has moved into one of the other rooms to ambush. We are not aware of any other threats. It seems to just be one guy. All right, let's roll. So essentially, Michael Williams has holed up in his room after killing his mother. Based on the information we know, he's the only suspect. Arriving on the scene, we instantly hear the sounds of muffled gunshots. This very open and large apartment complex has clearly seen better days, as trash is everywhere and there are handfuls of rooms for rent. Entering the first floor, we don't find much, yet entering the second floor, we are not only met with our first hostiles, but can find a ramshackled server farm. Sparks drip from the ceiling, and wires are strewn about everywhere, clearly leading to a source elsewhere. Looking outside, we can see some of the wires siphoning off of a power line. Moving to the next floor, we enter through the neighbor's room and find who appears to be Michael's mother, alive and well. She doesn't really have much to say, and it's very strange to find her as it was reported that she was killed, but we can talk about that later. It is interesting to note that her vent is open, leading directly into Michael's room, with an empty plate just sitting there most likely meaning she cooks for him and then just passes it through the wall. Entering Michael's apartment, we see it's a streamer's wet dream. Anime waifus aplenty, neon everywhere, pixel art, totally not G Fuel, a sword, another sword, prescription drugs, drug drugs, hentai, unhealthy food, stickers, nerf guns, more waifus, and more waifus, and more waifus. Michael's whole apartment is one big reference, so I'll try my best to name everything. Right in the doorway, we see some very Studio Ghibli-inspired art, a poster for a movie called Demon Souls and Demon Souls 2, which are references to demons' souls, can't forget that stupid apostrophe, zombie mushrooms from outer space, which is most likely a reference to Plants vs. Zombies, and Death and Roses is probably a Guns N' Roses reference. 
On his TV, we see he has boob tube open, which is clearly a YouTube knockoff with a much better name. In his kitchen, we can see a list of all of his passwords, the Mindjot private network password, and a to-do list. In the living room, there is a pool table converted into one for D&D, however, it's not called Dungeons and Dragons, but rather Warriors and Wizards. We can find rule books for the Enchanted Odyssey world setting, maps, dice, and a couple character models that look to be from Hero Forge. On the shelf, we can see two bobbleheads depicting two of the developers. In fact, all over the apartment, we can find bobbleheads for all the devs. In the next room, we can find some furry shit and a poster for a movie called Cybombies, which is just incredibly fun to say out loud. When we reach the streaming room, things began to take a turn. Despite the abundance of neon, this is a very dark room. On the table, we can find pictures of girls clearly taken without their permission. We can see pulled up on a TV a video for the song 808 Sueños, a song we learned about when looking into Andre Williams is past. In fact, the frame it's frozen on is Andre Williams' suspect photo. Looking at Michael's gaming setup, we see he was in the middle of a live stream when the raid happened. When we roll up to the camera, we can see ourselves on the screen, and if we shoot the camera, it stops as the chat continues to roll on. Looking at his Totally Not Discord Discord chat, we see Mr. Milky Toes is not only a stalker, but a pedophile. One of his friends asks for the quote-unquote goods, to which Michael responds with, check out what's on the Mindjot private server, followed by a picture of little kids. These kids, by the way, are the same ones we can find at Brixley's. After S-ranking the mission, which by the way, thank you all for the comments about this last video, as I didn't realize we get more evidence for S-ranking missions, which my life, this is going to be incredibly difficult, so if any of you guys want to email me images of all the evidence, I totally wouldn't be opposed to that. Thank you in advance. Anyway, examining the evidence, we learn a few more interesting tidbits of lore. We find a rare figurine of an anime character called Pakumaku-chan from the popular animated series Shinigami. Only 50 of these figurines were ever released, many gifted from Hexon Studios to popular streamers, including Michael. The item was sequestered by forensics due to the number of different DNA sources on this figurine. Which, ew. We also find a Bitcoin miner, one of Bindjot's lesser known side projects, the HRX Bitcoin miner, is capable of generating profits of almost $800 daily. Considered a highly desired item, the HRX miner was only available and intended for very few content creators, mainly creators who participated in promotional Bitcoin scams, spearheaded by Mindjot. Knowing the lack of moderation by the streaming server's open house, streamers who participated remained on the platform, cashing in on their credulous fan base, falling for the scam. And finally, a police report detailing the event of Michael Williams' sexual misconduct investigation. Much of the situation and the controversy that followed were forgotten, with the charges put against Michael having been dropped entirely despite insurmountable evidence pointing towards its legitimacy. The date of the report was June 27, 2024. During the early hours of June 25, 2024, the LSPD received a call reporting a sexual assault and disturbance at a house party in the San Uriel condominiums. Upon arrival, an officer met with the suspect, Miss Cosgrove, and close friends of hers at around 300 hours outside of the condominiums. Miss Cosgrove and her friends were exiting the party and stated a Caucasian male wearing a gray hoodie and black trousers made sexual advances towards them throughout the event and seemed to be under the influence of alcohol and drugs. Others who came forward believed the suspect to be Michael Williams, who lived in the condominiums. So this basically confirms that Michael Williams, not the best guy and is pretty much some incel loser, which is shocking that he ended up being a streamer of all careers. Anyway, this concludes all the relevant information I found on this map, so let's talk about some theories. First things first, Michael Williams' mother isn't dead. We can't find her body, and we find a suspect that suspiciously looks like her. So what happened? Well, based on the Mindjot raid map, Michael was swatted. During his stream, one of his viewers must have swatted him and as the cops arrived, the men who Michael most likely hired to guard his server farm reacted with hostilities towards the cops, escalating the situation. The whole thing was basically a happy accident for the cops. They got called on Michael Williams as a joke and just so happened to run into his illegal wrongdoings, which led them to his private server farm, which led them to his private computer, which led them to Mindjot. Based on Williams' not Discord Discord chats, they hacked into Mindjot's private servers and were perving on those images. He didn't have any affiliation with Brixley or Vol and just found the images. After the raid, the LSPD confiscated Michael's computers and learned of Mindjot's evil deeds, prompting their raid on the Mindjot facility. This makes the fall of Brixley and Vol and all the child predators we encounter all the more ironic, as it all started just because some non-factor streamer got swatted, and then all the cards came tumbling down. 
Other than that, there's not much more to theorize about. We know for a fact that this mission takes place either during or a little after 2024, based on the date of Michael's police report. But in a very rare turn of events for Ready or Not, this is a very cut and dry mission, and segues perfectly into our next raid at the Mindjot facility.